It just looks like a swarm of bees down there. That is awesome. Welcome back to the channel, Fish and Freaks. Last time I saw you, I was, well, here at Fun and Sun, and we were getting a little sneak peek. Flash forward, I've already been to the Great Lakes, y'all. I'm not editing that series. It's a four-part series. You know, some of the Guga Squad guys, the guys that normally edit our videos, they're incredible. They're awesome. They're editing it. So, it, it's, I promise you, it's gonna be super tasty, and the fishing was uh, the best smallmouth fishing I've ever had. So it's gonna be really good, and other species as well. So while I was up there, Fun and Sun was getting my boat ready. The reason I'm standing over here in this little area, this is where I saw the boat the other day, but the, the first time I ever came up here, we were up here just kinda dreaming about getting a, a bass boat. And at the time, we, we had this little aluminum boat, and there was this little red skeeter sitting in the in the corner, and it, you know it had some rain on it, and it looked a little damp, but uh, it was a juicy jewel underneath and so that became uh, Old Red as it was known. Uh, I eventually got another red boat and that's what you guys know is, as Old Red. But that was the original Old Red and it was a ZX-195. So this is where I got my first bass boat. I've had, I think this is going to be my seventh boat y'all. Incredibly blessed now to be a, a part of the fishing industry, um, dabbling, dabbling deep work with great partners, have great sponsors, uh, great people like Fun and Son that want to help me out. And I'm excited to run some Mercury Motors. I haven't had one in a while, but this one is going to be rigged up with a new Pro XS. So I'm excited to have Mercury on board as a sponsor. I know some of y'all are thinking, uh, LFG, the Skeeter, what, what happened? Well, no more Skeeters. I've had many Skeeters. I have run a number of Skeeters, and I will just tell you, uh, I think they're good boats and they have evolved over the years. Here's the deal with Skeeter, which many of you may not know. They're owned by uh, Yamaha. So you will never find, almost never, you will almost never find a Skeeter with a Mercury motor on it. If you do, that is referred to as an East Texas unicorn and they are extremely rare. Go ahead and just make a wish. It's like a shooting star. You'll probably win your next bass tournament if you see one. I'm about to walk in here. We're going to see the brand brand new boat and it's also got um, new accessories on it that I don't really know so we're gonna take it out on the water today get her fired up and then try out the new toys I'm very excited to try out the pan optics not really try out because y'all I just I just got to use it for the first time up at the Great Lakes game changer so this boat has it I can't wait to fire it up and track them down First one in the driver's seat of the silver bullet. I've I've seen you around here a bunch, dude. Like you're a bass fishing fiend. So uh, get, you want to give me the rundown? Yeah. So this thing is a was it 2020 Phoenix? We have the Garmin graphs on here, front and back. We have the uh, what is it Atlas 12 inch jack plate. Yeah. Atlas dude. 12 inch jack plate. We got the hot foot down here. Also running with the Mercury Pro XS 250 power pole blades on it. Sweet Nicely done. Around. Love it, man. Hope you have some Mondos. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Cool. You're in the know. I would say you have a future in this industry for sure. The way you just said all that by just sitting down in it and just spilling it. So, yeah. well done, my friend. That was well put. I don't know if I need to say anything else. And I'm gonna get it popping. I'm gonna get it popping out on the waters. Y'all, I've got a hard dose of Texas reality coming back here from fishing the Great Lakes, being in, you know, 55 degree mornings. 78 degree days, maybe 80, and then come back here, and it's like, boom, 90 at 7 a.m. We just pulled this thing out in the sun, and it's a whole different bird, if you will. It's like it just spread its wings, it opened up that flat gray, 
This is the man that designed it, Fane. This boat, dude, this, you did a great job. The Silver Bullet, truly living up to expectations here. How's boat sales been this year with everything? Best year we've ever had so far. Last <laughs> Not a <month>. problem. <laughs> last month, record-breaking month for Fun and Sun last month. You just heard Fane say, a record year, a record month. The Corona thing has just, it's got everybody fishing. Now, honestly, it's been great for the industry. I know it's terrible, but more people fishing, the better. You know what I'm saying? The more danglers out there, the, the more the more our little world of fishing just ignites, turns on. <whistles> Gonna put a little fuel in there. Yum, 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 yum. I'm excited to hear how it sounds. 24 pitch prop, that's a lot of torque. That's a lot of eh. getting out of the hole. And they say this thing runs like a scalded dog. Boy, howdy, it is a certified Texas steamer out here today, ladies and gentlemen. So, just got the golf cart, got a bunch of the tackle in here, and we're gonna start transferring over. It's time. Life jackets, all of that good stuff. Can't forget that. Can't forget the jackets. Don't forget your throwable and your rope, all that stuff. The flat gray mixed with the uh, pinstripe black and then the silver coming through looks really cool. Obviously, I mean, it matches the motor. It's, it's just sick. Time lapse of transferring tackle, and let's get this motor started and wing. dirty. It is just dirty sounding. Whoa! Oh! What did old Tim Allen used to say? Home improvement show I grew up with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Tim Allen. Oh, 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 oh. You go ahead and smash that like button. You know what I'm talking about right there. Like this power. Hey, hey, no. it feels good. It's so shiny. It's so shiny. There's something about a shiny object that sounds just mean, muscly, and goes fast. That guy. The drain plug's way up underneath. I don't have the drain plug situation with the the uh, the OS moment drain plug situation. Got to manually do, manually do it. So I probably won't be taking my drain plug out nearly as much on this boat. What was that daggum other thing? There was one other thing. To spark my memory, I'm just gonna get it up on pad. I need to break in this motor. I'm really not gonna idle too much though. I'm not gonna fish too much. I, if I turn on the graph and I start looking at the pan optics, I'm gonna get lost. I really need to like seal the rings on this thing, get the pistons hot, get it broken in. So just go ahead and just rip it around for a little while before I do much idling. So let's just go ahead and do that. impressions yep I like it just went ahead and did her you know I mean if she's gonna break she's gonna break on that first try right not just kidding read your manuals do your thing but I just like to hit the gas hard the organization is way better on the new silver bullet here we have a sliding adjustable tray this goes up and down I've got it separated right now into uh, you know jigs plastics I've got all the cranks and up and all that up there. You know, you got your like a mini day box in that sliding situation. You put your money bags full of your Guggen baits on the sides right here, and you're good to go. Love that aspect of it. Oh, and it also has one of these little foam dealies. That seems like a small deal, but I, I mean, I throw jigs and spinner baits a lot, and they're they're kind of hard to store. 
The jigs aren't under store, it's really just a spinner base, but hanging them up really helps, it honestly does. Just the overall layout, little things that are considered, I think are better than the Skeeter, I have to say. Um, the net is actually up under here. It's up under there. I like the old traditional rod box. We're going back to carpet in here. Um, I like the carpet better, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't like the drainage in my last boat. Things got pretty crusty. You still got to let this boat dry out too, and it doesn't have the dry dock. It doesn't have the fans that run through, so that's a downgrade. But I just like the organization. Like I, I can get a lot more uh, rods in how that rod rack is in there. I just like it better. It's the single one. And then you're pretty much just open to store whatever in all these other boxes. So they're deep. It's good. I like the organization. Seats are great. I really like the center console. The center console allows you to store things in here. You know, your phone, your wallet, things like that. And it's also got little storages. Uh, little things like this. You got your dye, you got your oils, that's what I put in there. Just little things, you know, just little hook, whatever. Um, this whole entire passenger rod box opens up, so you can open open that, store stuff in that, and of course you got your storage boxes right be, back here. This is all the same. This actually has five batteries in it, y'all. There's five batteries. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see from back here, but Trust me, there's five in there, so there's one just for running the electronics. These big old grass they make nowadays, they suck a lot of power. So one is just for the motor itself, and the other one is for power poles and electronics, stuff like that. You know, we got the power pole blades on there, look at sick. Look how nasty that motor is, just the reflection off the water. I'm not used to having a black motor without a cover, so. That's pretty solid right there. I'm gonna have to keep that thing clean. Hydraulic jack plate on this one too. I missed that. Uh, two boats ago I had a hydraulic jack plate. I really like that. Um, and one of the guys there that was running one of these, he had the exact same thing. He said, best performance is at really two and a half, you know, once you get up on pad. So that's where I'm keeping it. Um, I don't think the handling is, good, is as good as the last silver bullet, you know, the Skeeter. I like the handling, feel more comfortable with that handling. I'm used to that style. I mean, that's my, like switching from Porsche or Ferrari. There's things that are different. And then if you don't know what chine walking is, when you get really fast, we're talking this boat goes fast, like 75. You know, my skier was like low 70s on a good day. But it'll start doing this right here, this number, like kind of kind of walking on you. And that gets a little squirrely. It feels like you could lose control. And so you really have to, you know, you gotta have some motor time. You gotta, you gotta know how to drive that thing. Fortunately, I got a little experience with it. Oh, here's one of the things I didn't like. Besides the drain plug being up in Timbuktu uh, on the butt crack of the boat over there. Um, little boo-boo here. I don't like this. I don't I don't like the attachments right here. I would have hoped they'd been over here so that, you know, when you're having to lift up your box, you know, you got issues. You got issues going on. So I'm going to get on the motor and break it in a little bit more before I start dabbling with the electronics. By the way... I want to do this right now and get, get spend a little time with it because tomorrow I'm leaving for a trip. Me and Stephanie, it is our five year anniversary, y'all. A lot of y'all have been here since the whole time, since the beginning, five years. So uh, thank you guys for, for hanging around. We met around water. Um, my life has been around water. Steph loves the water too. And we're not taking Amy with us. It's just going to be me and Steph. So we're, we're going to take the boat and we're going to have a good time out there on the water. She has not fished with me in over a year. Very sad. But anyway, we're going to get a little dangle time together, which has been a rare occasion over these last few years. Been busy, y'all. Been busy. Okay, let's fire her up again and just take a, take a listen from right here in this seat. Ooh. Ooh, when it hits, it's dirty. It is just dirty. Okay, I'm going to put the old LJ on. We're going to get to ripping.
drive totally different. The, 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 if for any of you that are curious, like these are the top two boat brands I would say right now that, that are get sold the most. This boat right here, great on top speed, great on tackle organization. Um, I should rate these things. Taking waves, I would give it like a seven. You know, it, it just, it doesn't take them like that, that FXR. Now the FX, a little bit different story, but FXR um, took the waves really, really well. A Skeeter is more like driving a high speed pontoon, to be honest with you. It's got those sponsons in the back. There's just a lot more control, whereas this boat is just, it's just more visceral. You hit a wave, a uh, little side chop, you're, you're, you know, the boat's going to the side, you got that more V action, and it is fast. The motor, the whole shot is okay. And then when you get like mid range and you hit it, it's like, boom. Like, I, I want to say this thing is a V8. I could be lying. If someone's out there that knows, just viscerate me in the comments. But I think this is a V8. It even sounds like a V8. It's just dirty. Top speed is crazy, even with that 24 pitch prop. The boat's gonna take a little getting used to, but it's not terrible. It's, it's really, it's not bad. It's just, it's just different. These are different boats. I will say, this one is, I think, better laid out for the tournament angler. Like, the, just the way the boat sets up, it's a little bit better for, for the tournament angler. If you know if you know how to drive a boat, you know what you're doing, and you like to go fast, I think this is your, your boat. I have not even talked about the electronics. I have not even talked about the trolling motor. I've never even put this trolling motor in the water. I don't even know how to use it. Garmin, up until, you know, these last couple years, I thought all they did was make navigational devices, watches, and big old electronic units for offshore boats. But it turns out they make just about everything. This hair's crazy, y'all. Haven't got a haircut since quarantine. And I don't think I'm going to. Steph really likes it. I'm kind of digging it, to be honest with you. You know, long hair, don't care. Fishes, beware. Okay, folks, now I just want to play with the pan optics. Look at these fish off to my right. Look how many there are. Look at this, look what is going on here. This is dang near cheating. Or if they don't buy it, it's just called frustration. Oh, but I'm already hooked up. So that's not what's happening. Oh my, what do we got here? Have we fouled hook a daggum? Oh, jeez. My goodness, we got the Mondo Whitey's out here. I always like to break in a new silver bullet with a good white bass sesh. I really just want to learn these pan optics check this out this is where the pliers and everything go kind of concealed up under there but we'll do Stick them back in their hole i can't get the spot lock engaged until i calibrate the uh, remote control by the way y'all this trolling motor look look at the ease it's smooth super smooth hyper smooth i would say and it's gone Look, look at the fish swimming up out of the school. Oh my gosh. This is incredible. I've heard that the panoptics for crappie fishing is, is so, so effective. I see why. I got to do this a little bit for walleye. Spoiler alert on the trip. And I'm doing it right here. I'm just messing around with the colors and whatnot and literally trying to learn this thing. Let's see if we can see that fish go back down. So you can see fish swimming here. There's one coming up. That is right below the boat. So where is my lure? That's what I want to see is where is my lure? This pan octus unit is the shizzy. And check this out. When I lift up the trolling motor, watch this. It just assumes the position. That is the easiest thing ever. So there's no like getting it straight with the foot. This is the transducer, which I can adjust outward or straight down, just kind of depending. So I'm gonna adjust it like that and see what happens. See if I can get my straight down performance. Oh, look at these fish right here. Gosh, look at the activity now. So I adjust it where I can see more straight down. Oh my gosh, you can see them coming up. This is, and they're literally coming up right in front of the boat though. Look at that. Look at that, this is insane. Look at them now. They're covered up, got him. Covered up. And they're juicies. Look behind me, they're surfacing. 
this is just not even fair. It's like the silver bullet is being crescent with a school of white bass right now. They're coming towards the vessel in droves. It just looks like a swarm of bees down there. That is awesome. Look at what's going on. Here's the school of fish, okay? I'm gonna drop my lure down. Okay, there it goes. There it is. And my spoon is tiny, remember. Watch these fish come up for it. They're coming up, they're coming up. They're following that fish, because he's got my lure. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. The education that you can attain by just watching this screen while you're fishing is next level. Next level. It is, I would have to say, worth the money just to learn. You could go back to regular sonar and still be effective, but you're learning how these fish are behaving. You're going to pick up so much, I can already tell. This is, this is just outstanding. Look at the fish coming up right now. Look at the fish coming up. I am, I am bum fuzzled by this. It feels, when you're on this panoptic system, it feels like you're, it's like godlike powers and you're looking out over the souls of the lake, except there are fish down there and you're taking them up to heaven and you're bringing them in the silver bullet. It is magical. I'm gonna learn so much from this thing. I'm so excited. I know I'm late to the party on this. There's a ton of YouTube's videos about it. If you guys wanna watch, learn, I have literally done that. That's how I learned it was so good for crappie and other stuff. But I'm gonna abandon my white bass here for a minute. I'm gonna go look at some other rock piles and things and see if we can get a bass on the line, just kind of look. And I'm gonna take it in. I'm gonna end on a great note here. Just discovering that. Okay, Chesty was loose. Ooh, got a bass on. I literally, this is the first time this has ever happened, but I got stopped by a police officer. He's right over there checking those folks. And uh, he, he had to go through my boat, literally brand new. Let's get this guy up in here. First, first bass in the new boat, baby. Yes. Caught him on that big old drag and drop, seven incher. All right, buddy, let's get you on hook. I know it's hot. Get you back in the waters. That was my second cast. Second bass cast, didn't have a GoPro. I literally had to, uh, I had to break out all my life jackets. I had to do my horn. I, ironically, I was checked like zero times in my other boat. First day out in this one, wah bam. Did I say drag and drop a second ago? That's where my mind is. I just came from the Great Lakes where the drop shotting was key. I meant to say slim shake. This is the seven incher. This is the big boy here. There's a rock drop off. There's some fish on top of it. It's a good crankbait spot, it looks like. You guys legal? Did you get a ticket? No, good. Good deal. I am. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I've just got a new boat, so I'm trying it out. Are you recording the video? Yeah, I was just catching a fish while you guys were getting checked. Damn. Subscribe to Lake Fort, guy. Appreciate you, man. Well, hey, good luck, guys. Yeah. Take it easy. Got some fishing freaks on the lake, dude. I'm just the energy already in this boat it's it's hot oh man i felt it going in the crevasses the deep crevasses in there man that's where i had that other one i got stuck and then i got it unstuck and then one ate it i got one bass and a bunch of white bass, a bunch of bass. yeah a bunch of them you guys going after white bass that's the same thing yeah all right I mean, it's far. It's like a couple hundred yards off the shore. A couple hundred yards down. Drop it down, reel it up a couple cranks, jig it. I'm telling you every time. Yeah, here, listen, follow me, seriously. I'll go slow. This looks like a father-son duo behind me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them, put them on the white bass. Catch them up. Show the boys where they're at. I want to see you hook one now. Fish on. I'm telling you, they're big too. Look at that, look at the size of them things. Yeah, like five hours ago. You gotta break it in right. There you go. 
Hey, watch him come up to the top too. Did you see that troll motor, guys? How cool is that? You guys have fun. Yeah, I'm taking off. I'm leaving them for you. Oh yeah, they're loaded. They're loaded. Them boys gonna have a good time out there. Yeah. We have launched the boat today. We've run into fishy creeks. Uh, we've discovered greatness with the pan optics. We caught white bass. We caught a large mouth. We got checked by a police officer. It's been a lot. It's been a lot that's happened. Just listen to the girth on this bad boy. It's actually quieter when you get it up on pad, and it's more gurgly and deep when it's in an idle. It's just nasty. I like it. Okay, I think I might just take it in. I'm, I'm getting just severely sunburned. We got a lot of fishing to do later this week uh, with OSG, going after crappie bass, you name it. We'll tackle the whole lake in the new boat, y'all. So thank you for tuning in today. I feel blessed to be in this industry, just working in it. And this is, man, literally living the dream. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching this channel. And I love you guys. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Be wrong to not do a yee-yee right now. Yee-yee!